Hi, I'm Dr. Matthew Romo, the founder of System Scholar, but my students, they often just call me Doc Romo. I founded System Scholar because I often come across people who struggle with systems that are simply not designed with them in mind. So with that, I'd like to welcome you to my new YouTube channel where I'd like to tell you a little bit about the core of what I do and why it is that I do it. With this video, I'd like to introduce you to human factors engineering and what it's all about and how it fits into the bigger picture. Human factors engineering, in conjunction with Lean Six Sigma and work analysis, are three disciplines when taken together, help improve how we design systems and help them complete their work in a way that's safe, efficient, and avoids error. Just like all of you, I've often been asked what it is that I do for a living. And when I answer, it's not uncommon for me to receive confused looks from folks when I tell them what it is that I do. But if you've never heard of human factors, don't worry, you're not alone. If you've ever worked in manufacturing, transportation, healthcare, or really anywhere where people work with complex systems, you've probably felt the impact of good or in some cases not so good design decisions. That's where human factors comes in and why it really deserves a seat at the table when we talk about fixing problems with systems that are functioning poorly or are injuring people or in other, otherwise broken. When it comes to process improvement, I think there are three core disciplines that come into play. Now you can think of these three disciplines as legs of a stool. Each one supports the others. You take one way and your process solution doesn't stand for long or it's not as efficient or as good as it could be. First up, let's talk about Lean Six Sigma. Now, Lean Six Sigma is a tool that many of you in industry are probably already very familiar with. It's all about process efficiency, reducing waste, cutting delays, and eliminating variation that leads to errors and rework. Too often, process improvements with Lean Six Sigma focus solely on the mechanics of the system, the steps, the data, the metrics, and they forget about the people actually doing the work. Lean Six Sigma, used in conjunction with human factors, ensures that we're optimizing it for the people who live the process every day. Because the most efficient process in the world doesn't help if it burns people out and it causes confusion or it sets them up to fail. Then we have work analysis. This is the discipline of measuring how people work and how work is actually done. It looks at task structure, flow, and workload to uncover where the demands on people don't match the design of the system. Now human factors, when brought into that, helps make sense of those demands, revealing the points of fatigue, overload, and inefficiency that might not otherwise show up just in the metrics by themselves. And finally, we have the third discipline, human factors, which is the key to human-centered process improvement. Human factors is all about designing systems that fit people, not forcing people to bend to poorly designed systems. That means designing for attention, decision-making, comfort, safety, ergonomics, and even worker dignity. When you bring these three pillars together, Lean Six Sigma, work analysis, and human factors, you don't just get efficiency. You get systems that are smarter, safer, and more sustainable because they actually work for the people who run them, not the other way around. So let's circle back to the question, what is human factors? Well, it's not just one thing. It's multidisciplinary and it lives at the intersection of multiple disciplines. First, we have engineering and the sciences. That would be systems thinking, design principles, and data analysis. Then biomechanics, anatomy, and physiology. These are the physical reality of human bodies. How we move, how we fatigue, 
how we interact with tools and environments. And finally, we have psychology and perception. Things like memory, attention, stress, and situational awareness, decision making. These are all components of human factors. At the overlap of engineering and biomechanics, we find physical and environmental ergonomics, how workspaces, tools, and environments can either support the body or strain it. And at the overlap of engineering and psychology, we get cognitive and organizational ergonomics, how people process information, communicate, and make decisions in complex environments. So would we say human factors, we're actually talking about a science that respects both minds and bodies and helps engineers, designers, and leaders build systems that actually fit the people that they're meant to serve. Human factors engineering is about designing with people in mind. It's the discipline that asks the question, does this system fit the person doing the work? Because when people have to modify the way that they're working to accommodate a system or the way that the, the process forces them to work, that's when errors, inefficiencies, and even injuries can happen. Good design starts with people and builds the system around them. When we talk about designing for people, it's easy to focus only on the mechanics of the system. However, if we want to make design choices that are optimally human-centered to help people, we need to really understand where we as engineers can actually inf influence a system. And that's where the human system model can help us kind of better understand this relationship. Now the human system model begins with the user, the human at the center of the work. Now the user might be a plant worker, a nurse, a technician, a driver, or a pilot. Uh, they should be considered an integral part of the system being redesigned as every design decision uh, ultimately affects them. The other side of this relationship is the system itself and that can take many forms. It might be a piece of equipment, a software interface, a physical workspace, or even an administrative process. We are really surrounded by systems and we interact with them all the time, often without realizing just how much they shape our performance and our safety. Humans control or use the system by inputting commands, making choices, and initiating actions. Then they receive feedback or effects from the system, sometimes visually, sometimes physically, sometimes through sound or motion. And that feedback shapes how they interact with the system and helps them decide what it is they want to do next. It's a constant loop. From an engineering perspective, those two points, control and feedback, are our opportunities as engineers to influence design. We can shape how humans interact with the system and how the system itself influences or communicates back both physically and cognitively. That's where human factors comes in, to ensure that those points are designed in ways that are usable, safe, and aligned with human capabilities. But there's more to it than just the interface. The design of any system is shaped also by external factors, things we don't always have control over but must account for in our design. Take the environment. Noise, temperature, vibration, lighting. These all affect how usable a system really is. A control panel, for instance, that's easy to use in a quiet office may be totally unreadable in a dim, vibrating truck cab. The goals of a system matter too. Are we building for a task that requires accuracy, speed, precision, monitoring, or even survival? Well, the design has to match the system's mission. Then there are the assets, time, funding, facilities, available labor, tools and materials. These determine what's possible and the trade-offs that we have to make in designing the system. And let's not forget about culture either. Things such as workplace morale, risk tolerance, demonstrated management support, incentives and rewards, and autonomy 
all affect how a system will be used and ultimately its performance. So when we're talking about designing systems with people in mind, we're not just talking about the interface. We're talking about everything that shapes that interaction from the physical and cognitive demands that we place on the user to the environment, to the mission, to the culture that it's used within. Here's where I believe that my approach to Systems Scholar can best support my clients. I don't subscribe to the white knight model of consulting. In other words, were I to simply come to your facility with a clipboard, ask a few questions, take the measurements myself, redesign your system in a vacuum, and then drop your report, the benefit to your company would be minimized. And the chance of your being able to maintain any long-term gains would be much lower. So, no white knights. Rather, I believe that the best consulting comes from working side by side with my client. My role as a consultant should be that of mentor and teacher, there to support your efforts, not dictate them to you. As the client, you know your system better than I ever will. So it's my role to help you grow your skill set, help you change the way you approach your work and systems, and help you cultivate new habits and solidify procedures that will help you maintain your gains and apply those same skill sets to other projects going forward. I view consulting as a partnership, not a simple exchange of services. At System Scholar, I blend human factors with Lean Six Sigma and work analysis to help small and mid-sized organizations solve persistent people-centered problems. We offer practical training, workshops, and coaching, both in person and online, all built around one central question. Does this system work for the people at its center? This is our very first video. So if you found it useful, please consider subscribing to our new YouTube channel. And if you'd like to connect and learn more, I've included links to our website and our LinkedIn in the description below, or you can follow this QR code to connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm confident that together we can enhance your company's processes, making them more efficient, intuitive, safe, and rewarding for your employees. I'd also love to support you in developing a new skill set to help better integrate human factors into your process improvement efforts. Thank you for the opportunity to share my vision with you, and I look forward to connecting soon. Thank you very much.